Hi everyone, and welcome to our very first episode of Ask Google Pay Devs, a series of videos where we'll address commonly asked questions about integrating Google Pay. To make it easier for us to find your questions, make sure to use the Ask Google Pay Devs hashtag across Twitter, YouTube, Stack Overflow, or any other site where you enjoy asking questions. I'm Jose, a developer relations engineer at Google Pay, and I'll be your host today. Before we start, and in case this is the first time you're taking a look at the online APIs for Google Pay, I'd like to share with you three reasons for integrating Google Pay in your applications and websites. First, when you add the Google Pay button to your website or mobile application, you're simplifying the checkout flow for your customers, reducing the number of steps to pay to as few as two clicks or taps. This not only makes your checkout process faster, but it also has an impact on your conversion performance. Second, there are hundreds of millions of cards that have already been saved to Google accounts during the phone setup process or from previous transactions with Google, including Google Play, Chrome, and other apps and websites that have already integrated with the Google Pay APIs. What does this mean for you? Your users don't need to log into their accounts to pay in your website or mobile application, ensuring a fast checkout process. And third, security. When a user chooses a form of payment through Google Pay, the payment credentials are encrypted before they leave the Google servers and sent to your application. It is not until you send those credentials to your payment service provider that they will be decrypted to their original form to complete the payment. This makes your application resilient to external vulnerabilities. When you're ready to integrate, you can create a business profile and submit your integration through Google Pay's Business Console. Okay, now we are ready to dive into your questions. Let's get to our first question of the day. How to collect payments for an application listed in Google Play? Should I use Play Billing or Google Pay? There are two primary ways to accept payments if you are distributing your under application through Google Play. Google Play's billing system and Google Pay. Google Play's billing system is required when you're selling digital items or services within an app on Google Play, while Google Pay can be used when you're selling physical items or services that will be used or delivered outside of your app, such as groceries, retail merchandise, or food delivery. Note that you can use Google Pay to make payments easier in your application, regardless of whether your app is listed on Google Pay or somewhere else. Should I integrate directly with the Google Pay libraries or should I use the libraries from my PSP? You can go with the libraries which are most suitable to you to complete the integration. Use the Google Pay Online libraries if you'd like to integrate the different payment providers separately or if you prefer to remove intermediate layers in the code and the dependencies you use. Using the Google Pay libraries directly is also useful if you want to quickly swap payment configurations and payment providers. Take a look at the payment data request object in the documentation to learn more. On the other hand, if you're using multiple features from a single PSP in your application and prefer to use one library that encompasses most of the functionality and APIs available, many PSPs offer complete packages that help you with just that. Take a look at the documentation for your specific payment provider to find out more. How to integrate Google Pay using a mobile or web library or framework? We want to provide you with the right set of tools to help you integrate Google Pay in the most familiar and convenient way for you and your team. If you are using generic stacks for your applications, like JavaScript on the web and Java or Kotlin on Android, you can use our vanilla libraries to get started on both platforms. Take a look at g.co slash pay slash API to learn more. We've also added support for the Google Pay button for many popular web frameworks like React, Angular, Vue, Svelte, and many others. There are framework-specific libraries for React and Angular, while the general purpose web component version can be used for other frameworks. Check out the repository on GitHub where discussions, issues, and pull requests are welcome. Where to place the Google Pay button inside your checkout form? Add the Google Pay button to the product page to provide an express checkout options for users who are likely to check out with only one product. We recommend placing digital wallets like Google Pay above your checkout form. The reason is that Google Pay makes it easy for your customers to choose from their existing payment details, like their card details and shipping addresses. Placing the button first means that customers won't start filling in the form before realizing that a faster alternative is available. The Google Pay button should be the same size as other buttons on the page. By default, 
the Google Pay button will wrap to the size of the text inside. This can be customized on the web by setting the button size mode property to fill and on Android. What happens after I receive a payment token from Google Pay? After a form of payment is successfully selected, a result is returned back to your application or website in response to the payment data request. This result contains information about the payment request and the payment method itself, which in turn includes what we refer to as tokenization information. This object contains an opaque payload in stream format that you need to relay to your payment processor or gateway of choice. This payload holds details about the form of payment selected by your users and is encrypted using keys shared between Google Pay and your PSP. In other words, only your PSP can decrypt and access the contents of the encrypted payload. If you are integrating Google Pay and hence operating in test mode, you are sent back a dummy token in stream format as seen in the example. To learn more about the payment data response returned by the load payment data request, take a look at our documentation using the link for this question in the description below. How do I complete my integration with the PSP? The way to handle the payment payload received from Google Pay will depend on how you are completing the operation with your payment processor. It's important to remember that the result returned by Google Pay contains the payment method selected by your user. The most common procedure is to use this payment method to create the order through your backend servers and from there, initiate the payment transaction with your PSP. Some PSPs offer alternative flows to complete a payment process. One of them separates the creation of the payment method and the order, allowing you to use the Google Pay result to create the payment method directly from your client using client libraries provided by your PSP. Once the payment method is created, you can initiate the payment transaction from your backend servers without attaching the payment method information and simply passing a reference to the object created previously. All in all, make sure to only issue requests containing sensitive information like order price from your backend servers. How to test my integration before publishing my application or website? Testing your integration before pushing them live is key to ensure a reliable checkout experience for your customers and a robust payment stack for your business. To help you test your payments flows holistically, we have created a set of test cards, authentication methods, and billing and shipping addresses that you can associate to your test accounts and use them to complete payment transactions while operating in test mode. You can enable test cards quickly by flipping a switch directly from the developer documentation. I have completed my integration. What do I need to do next? If you have already integrated Google Pay in your web or Android application, you are one step away from collecting payments with Google Pay in production. To do that, you'll need to submit your integration using Google Pay's Business Console, which will guide you through the process of creating a business profile and submitting and managing your web and Android integrations. Once your integration is cleared for production, all you need to do is change the environment to production and publish or deploy your application. You can access Google Pay's Business Console in this link. What security implications are there after integrating Google Pay? The term security in payments is present at various stages in a transaction, and they all need to be considered separately. Let's use a familiar example to help explain the concept. Suppose that you develop an application that allows users to create information that only they can see, like their shopping list through a password protected user account. For these accounts to be secure, the overall service needs to meet a minimum set of requirements, like using an encrypted connection between your application and your servers, storing credentials securely, or prompting your users to use a strong password, among others. If any of the previous requirements is not adopted correctly, your system may become vulnerable and your user's information can get exposed. A payment transaction also has multiple security layers which are required in order to ensure a safe payment experience for your users like encrypting payment information in transit, tokenized card details, cardholder authentication, payment authorization, or storing payment de details securely. Some of these security requirements are handled by PCI DSS compliant third-party service providers or gateways, while others are embedded as part of the payment processing stack in card networks and other payment methods. Keeping that in mind, your service is responsible for collecting payment details and securely forwarding them to your PSP or processing stack. This is where Google Pay can help. 
when your customers use Google Pay in your application or website, their payment credentials are encrypted before they're shared with you to create the order with your payment processor. This means that even if your service gets compromised, the user payments information is still safe. In addition to that, make sure to continue running your existing risk checks through your payment processor or existing in-house infrastructure when the order is created. What's the difference between gateway and direct integration? Which one should I be using? With a gateway integration, you are benefiting from the work your payment service provider or PSP has done to support Google Pay. In this case, the payment information returned by Google Pay can only be decrypted and used by your PSP. As mentioned earlier, if your service is compromised, your customer's payment details are kept safe. If your PSP is offering a Google Pay Gateway integration, it is recommended that you use it. This significantly streamlines your integration and ongoing maintenance requirements. The direct integration is designed for businesses who are PCI DSS compliant and work with a PSP that does not offer the Google Pay Gateway integration. Direct payment tokens are securely shared with you the merchant. Because of this, direct integrations are required to provide ongoing evidence of PCI DSS level 1 compliance and regularly rotate encryption keys. And these were our topics for today's session. I hope that your questions were answered, and if they weren't, make sure to post them on Twitter, YouTube, and Stack Overflow using the Ask Google Pay Devs hashtag, so we can feature them on one of the upcoming episodes. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.